to my channel it's your girl Nadine and if you're new here welcome and for all my returning subscribers tuning in once again hello hi and welcome back to a brand new video so in today's video I decided to list my top tips on how to successfully pass your preceptorship orientation period as a newly qualified midwife so basically these tips helped me when I was on the preceptorship program um, I just finished my preceptorship program in February and I basically listed all the things that I did that helped me basically transition from student midwife to newly qualified midwife on the preceptorship program orientating to each and every single department in maternity so yeah I hope these tips help you guys i hope you guys take something from this if you're newly qualified or if you're about to finish and qualify so yeah please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy my videos be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already and let's get started with the tip number one so for those that don't know what a preceptorship program is i have created a video on my youtube channel basically telling you guys about the preceptorship program so be sure to check that out um, if you want a more in-depth uh, definition or an explanation of what a preceptorship program is but briefly uh, let me just explain what a preceptorship program is for midwives so basically um in a nutshell we as newly qualified midwife we join a trust and some trusts have a preceptorship program for newly qualified midwife so the program is basically designed to help the newly qualified midwife um, learn everything that she didn't get to learn while she was a student or refresh her knowledge um, as she's now transitioning from student to newly qualified midwife so the program consists of study days um, training sessions uh, one-to-ones um, you have competencies that you need to get ticked off and signed off and things like that so you're basically um, given extra support while you are transitioning from student to newly qualified midwife you're not basically thrown into the deep end to kind of figure it out on your first day as a newly qualified midwife the program is basically designed to help you um, basically be the best midwife that you need to be after you're qualifying um, and while you're on the preceptorship program you basically rotate in all the different departments in maternity so you go to uh, labor ward for a couple months and then you move to the postnatal ward for a couple of months antenatal ward for a couple of months you go to the community for a couple of months you go to clinics for a couple of weeks um, and you basically rotate in all the different departments and then at the end of your preceptorship program you are then basically based in one area full time um, so every hospital is different people do different things for their for their preceptorship program some people do six months preceptorship program some people do 12 months preceptorship programs where I work we do a 12 month preceptorship program where we basically rotate to every different departments within those 12 months and then after those 12 months you got all your all your competency signed you then get assigned to an area where you stay uh, basically there permanently um, so that's what a preceptorship program is in a nutshell but do check out my video that I posted a little while back I will link it to this video and it will also be in the description box below so be sure to check that out if you want an in-depth um, explanation to what a preceptorship program is so without further ado let's get started with tip number one for this video so tip number one that I have for you guys is be on time to every single shift that you have when you start working as a newly qualified midwife. So punctuality is key. When I was in the preceptorship program, I made it my absolute mission to be on time because being late one is very, very bad because you're starting a new place. Um, you've got a new employer. They are basically, you know, seeing how you work, seeing how you are professionally. So if you're constantly late or you're constantly running up to shifts, um, you know, unprepared and running into your, you know handover room unprepared and late then it's not going to look good 
on you so you need to make sure that you're on time that you're always prepared for your shift that you arrive on time you know where you're going you're not you know having to wander around the hospital for hours trying to find where you're going arrive on time so that when handover starts you're there ready to take handover so another good thing about being on time is when you arrive on time for work you are not stressed um, you're not you're not stressed from you know running for a bus or running for that train having to be on time you basically arrive to work stress-free you're strolling in you're not running up the stairs you're strolling in putting your bag away putting your lunch in the fridge saying hello to your colleagues catching up with them you're not kind of you know having to do everything fast-paced because you're late and you have to be on time so being on time just basically makes your shift starts on a good note and you're less stressful you're not huffing or puffing you're not you know tr you're falling all over the place because you're trying to get to your place on time or you're trying to be in that room on time to have handover and things like that being on time just makes your life less stressful and you have a good start to your shift rather than huffing and puffing and everything is delayed and you've been running up the stairs trying to get to the lift and things like that so be on time so you can have a great start to your shift and with a great start to your shift your day will just be smoother because you started on a high then your day will just be smooth as your day continues so that is tip number one so tip number two is be prepared for each and every shift so what i mean by be prepared is bring all your essential equipment or anything that you will need for that shift make sure you prepare it the night before put it in your bag put it in your coat put it in your uniform get your uniform ready be prepared for each and every single shift that you go to while you're on the preceptorship program so you need to start off being prepared so that after your preceptorship program you will basically continue that and that's how you will be you know moving forward when you become your own kind of midwife so be prepared for every single shift bring your stethoscope if you need it bring your pens bring your pencils bring your bag and most importantly bring your food when you're hungry on a 12-hour shift is not great at all so make sure you pack your food and make sure you bring your food when you go to each and every shift there are times where you can't leave the department or you can't leave the ward and go to the shop because of the activity on the ward and you're having to like snack here and there while you're on the ward so bring a snack bring your food in case shops are shut and you're on a night shift and there's no shops open and things like that just make sure you bring your food because when you're hungry you're not thinking straight you're not yourself and your shift is basically ruined because you forgot to bring your lunch so bring all your essential equipment if you have um, an accessory bag or a pencil case bag or something like that make sure it's packed and ready for each and every shift there's nothing worse into coming onto a shift and you're about to take handover and you realize you have no pen like that's just the necessity of each and every shift you need to have a black pen ready when you don't have a black pen you're now having to ask people to borrow a pen you look unprofessional you look disorganized you you just don't look like an organized person come with your pens come with your paper come with your notepad come with your stethoscope come with your lunch come prepared for each and every single shift the way you start is how you will then continue on with your days as a newly qualified midwife and as a you know a midwife later on as you you know as the years progress so the way you start is hopefully how you tend to stay and how you tend to be as you basically progress in your career so always be prepared be prepared with your time be prepared with your equipment and all your essential things you need for work so the next tip that i'll give you guys is be friendly to each and every person that you come across in the hospital whether it's your colleagues or the people that you are caring for let's first talk about colleagues and why it's very important to be you know friendly and be nice and be open when it comes to your colleagues so your colleagues are now the people that you're going to be working with for majority of your time and majority of your days you're going to be seeing them either every single day monday to friday or you're going to be seeing them three days a week for 12 hours in that day so you need to be nice to them you need to be friendly with them you need to be polite with them you never know um what can happen and you may want 
want that person to help you out in a certain situation if you come on a shift and you act you know above everyone and you have a bad attitude towards everyone and you're not friendly you don't want to talk to anyone you feel like you're above and beyond everyone then people just not care to help you when you have um, situations where you need to for example swap a shift you have a friend's wedding and you need to swap a shift if you're stuck up to your colleagues or you're not friendly to your colleagues no one's going to swap shifts with you and no one's going to help you out if you need a helping hand no one is going to show you things if you need things to be shown things like that so basically being friendly to your colleagues like naturally being friendly to your colleagues will make your work environment you know less hostile it will make your hours in the day fly by because everyone is friendly you're having a good time with your colleagues um and people are more willing to help you out if you're behind on your notes and you need someone to for example to give you your IV fluid or do your drug run for you while you concentrate on your documentation they are more inclined to help you and assist you in what you're doing and what you need to do for in order for you to leave work like for example where I work we help each other we have a very friendly environment so if my colleague is struggling with her medication and um, doing her drug round i may help her and offer my help in helping her with her drug round or if she needs me to do her drug round while she focuses on her documentation but say for example i've done my drug round and i've done my documentation and i'm up to date with everything i will then offer my support and i will then offer my help so that she can also finish on time and get home on time no one wants to see a colleague struggle why you have basically nothing to do in your update or and you're basically um, up to date with everything so that is a very very important tip be friendly with your colleagues you never know when you may need them whether it's to you know swap a shift with you whether it's to help you with your documentation with your drug ground you need answers for something you've got questions for something just be friendly it makes your life a lot easier while you are working and while you are on the preceptorship program because after you're on the preceptorship program and you are based on that ward because they can put you anywhere they can put you anywhere and if you happen to be rude to the postnatal midwives and you're thinking you're gonna go walk work on the labor ward and then you happen to be based on the postnatal midwife you're basically there and you have to deal with the atmosphere that you then created so just be nice to every single person that you meet on your orientation period whether you're on labor ward postnatal ward antenatal ward in the clinics be nice to every single person you never know where you will be based so just be nice to everyone it makes your life a lot easier so the next and most important tip that i may give you guys is when you are taking handover from each and every shift that you go on make sure you take notes um so for example you are taking handover in a group setting um the day the night staff are basically giving handover to the day staff and they're telling you about each and every pe person on the on the ward while you're sitting there listening to handover i will suggest and i will highly highly recommend to make notes on that piece of paper that they give you say for example they say this lady delivered at this time on this date um, she is now day zero say for example day zero is not written on the sheet note it down day zero so that you are aware how many days she is postnatally and then they say she had an EBL of 500 if you look down and there's no EBL written down there note it down so you know her EBL because that will then help you in her care or her plan of care um, later on when you then look after her because if you know her EBL you know whether you need to take bloods postnatally if you need her to be reviewed if she needs iron tablets but if you don't have that information written there how will you then plan you know the care that you're going to provide for that lady so make notes on handover and then for example let me carry on with the scenario so her ebl they say her ebl is missing so note it down they said the first stage was complete but that information is there and then they say she needs a doctor review for this reason and this reason um if they haven't written that down note it down and if they say she has a history of anxiety and depression and she's on this medication if that's not written there 
note it down and then if they talk about baby's history they say she has a male infant weighing three five six seven at gars were this this and that the gap was and they say say for example the gap is missing on the handover sheet note it down because you may need the gap because it's also another plan of care for baby if the gap is small or if the gap is big then you need to then do a plan of care for that baby so what i could say is note down or take notes when doing handover or when taking handover because that will then help you on the care that you will then provide for the women that you would then look after so on handover the best thing to do is basically take as much information as you can for the midwives that are then leaving the shift so that when they go home you basically have everything you need to know about the women that you're going to care for also for example if there's things missing on the handover sheet say for example they didn't mention the sex of the baby or if the baby's passed during open bowels before that midwife leaves the ward or before she leaves the handover room um ask her be like sorry did you mention if the baby has done a poo and a wee or did you mention um if it was a male or female or did you mention if mom has a catheter if she has a catheter what is the time that that catheter needs to come out or for example did you did we need pre-feed bms for baby if she didn't mention her handover so just make sure that you note every single thing down or you retain as much information as you can on handover so that when you take you know over care nothing is missing you're not um basically missing information in that way you know you can't deliver the right care for that lady and for that baby say for example if information are missing you may not know whether that woman needs to be reviewed by a doctor and that gets missed and then her plan of care is basically not the best as it should be and then she gets missed out of the doctor's plans and the doctors don't see her and then she gets delayed in treatment and things like that so that's why it's very very important to note as much information as you can on handover um, take down as much information ask as much information as you can and make sure that you have enough information on handover before you start your shift and start working so the next tip is when you go to a new department or a new place of work during your preceptorship orientation period make sure you note down where your emergency equipment are based or where they are placed in your area in your place of work um, and also the uh, emergency equipment codes on how to use the trolleys and how to open your emergency equipment in case of an emergency so as a preceptee midwife on the preceptor program so you'll be basically traveling from department to department or from area to area so you'll be on labor ward the next couple of months then you'll be on a postnatal ward and the next couple of months you'll be on the antenatal ward when you go to each new place take note of your emergency equipment say for example you start on labor ward go around and make sure people tell you where the emergency equipment is you need to find out where your pbh trolley is you need to find out where your shoulder dystocia bag is you need to find out where your maternal resource trolley is where your baby resource trolley is where the emergency phone is where the emergency numbers are so make sure at each and every area you go to someone shows you around shows you all the emergency equipment and all the codes to access the emergency equipment there's no point knowing where the pph trolley is but not knowing how to get into the pph trolley say for example there's a pph on labor ward and they ask you to go get the pph trolley or go get the medication from the pph trolley and you basically run to the pph trolley you get there and it's locked and you need to know the code so you running back to them saying what is the cold is just delaying and the emergency is just going to delay the whole process so make sure you not only know where the emergency equipment is but also how to access the emergency equipment also with accessing the emergency equipment or your medication fridges every single ward or area has an emergency fridge make sure you know where the key is if it's locked by a key or make sure you know what the code is if it's locked by a code okay there's nothing more annoying or more embarrassing than a new preceptorship midwife running to the emergency equipment getting there and they can't access the fridge or they can't access the trolley because it's locked and they don't know the code so what i would advise at every single um area new area that you go to ask a senior midwife or someone that's you know 
know regular in that area to show you around show you where the emergency equipment is and also the codes for each and every emergency equipment and then note the codes down either in your phone notebook or in a little notebook that you have so you constantly have that with you in case you forget and it's also very long to memorize numbers like there on the spot so I will just basically note it down in your phone or note it down in the notebook that you have so that is a very very important tip know where your emergency equipment are or is placed or where they are and how to access them like the access codes for each and every emo emergency box or trolley your fridge that you need to access in, in case of an emergency so tip number six is make sure you note down all the important numbers or extension numbers that you may need in case of any emergency or in case you need to bleep certain doctors or certain people within your area so basically what i mean by this is sometimes in an emergency situation they may ask you to put out a call for basically a neonatal call or neonatal emergencies if you run out and you don't know the number or you don't know the extension or the people you need to call then you're basically going to delay the whole process so numbers like double two double two obviously everyone knows this is very easy to remember but you just need to note down all the important extension numbers or emergency numbers that you may need in case of you know emergency situation or things that are not emergency emergency related or you need to get hold of doctors you need to know the extension numbers that they use when they are on the ward so for example when i was a preceptorship midwife i noticed down all the doctor's numbers if I ever needed to bleep a doctor for a review for my lady say for example my lady was having um, multiple episodes of high blood pressure and I really needed a doctor to see her I would then bleep the doctor um, and I would have the number to hand and then I'll just bleep them and then they'll come and review my lady so numbers like doctor's bleeps uh, if you need a pediatrician to come see a baby a pediatrician bleep um, if you need uh, the manager on call their number if you need need um say for example the lab extension you need anti d things like that so just make sure you note down all the important extension numbers um that you may need say for example you need to call another ward you know the extension for that ward if you need to call labor ward you know the extension number for labor ward to be able to speak to the coordinator if you need to transfer a lady down in labor things like that make sure you note down all the important numbers and important ex extension numbers and important bleep numbers in case you need to get hold of someone else within the team to come review a lady to come review a baby if you need to transfer a lady down to labor ward if you need to call for an emergency if you need blood work from the lab and things like that just make sure you note down all the important extension numbers bleep numbers ward numbers um and manager numbers and things like that so tip number seven is know your trust policies and guidelines wherever you work so for example if you are rotating to labor ward make sure you read the labor ward policies and guidelines for your trust so how would you care for a woman if she had a pph how would you care for a woman who is going for a cesarean section how would you care for a woman if she is gdm on diet or she's diabetic type 1 type 2 so you basically need to know your policies and guidelines for each and every single department that you work in um knowing your policies and guidelines guidelines will help you basically know the plan of care or how to basically do your job um, rather than constantly having to ask people I mean you can ask people but if you do your background knowledge or your background reading then you can then you know ask someone knowing that you went out of your way to actually find the information yourself I feel like a lot of people don't access the policies and guidelines for their trust in terms of the plan of care that they need to do and undertake but it's a very good resource in terms of what you need to do in order for you to successfully care for a woman effectively and safely um, all your policies and guidelines are freely found on the internet they are readily available for you to go and read so I would highly recommend that you go and use those policies and guidelines because it tells you basically what you need to know if in doubt if you are ever in doubt on how to do anything or how to care for any anyone go on the internet grab the guideline of the policy for what you're looking for 
and read on it and it will basically outline what you need to do say for example in my trust um, I was on the antenatal ward for the first time and I made sure that before I started my antenatal rotation as a perceptive midwife I went onto the intranet and I downloaded the guideline or the policy for that for how to induce women and how that whole process works so in that guideline basically showed me the criteria on which women will be in use the criteria on, on which women will be inpatient or outpatient the medication that we use the the dosage the amount what you need to do before you in, induce a woman and what you need to do after you induce a woman how often do you need to do ctgs and how often do you need to call a doctor for a review or when do you need to call a doctor for a review um and things like that it had basically everything that i needed to know um and everything that i was unsure about obviously i then asked a more senior midwife but having that policy or that guideline in front of me meant that i can basically go to that policy and guideline for information for example i would be on a shift and if i was unsure about when to take a purpose out for example say for example this lady was complaining of contractions and she, and I didn't know when she will meet the criteria for me to remove the purpose so I'll grab the guideline or the policy and it'll basically tell me when I could take the purpose out and when not to take the purpose out and things like that for me the policies and the trust guidelines were a massive help um, as a newly qualified midwife on the preceptorship program it meant that I had all my in-depth knowledge and everything else that I didn't know I then asked but I had all my basically I had all my knowledge already for me to kind of you know fall back on if i had no one around or if i had you know if everyone else were busy and i kind of didn't know what to do in emergency situation i kind of had all my information there um already and i kind of just you know went back to my policies and i went back to my guidelines and i looked at it and i read i read it and i made sure that i read and understood everything that i needed to do for that lady um in situations where i couldn't ask questions or there was no one around or things like that so yes that is a very very big tip and i highly recommend that you guys go ahead and look at your hospital trust policies and guidelines on how to care for women in each and every single department that you go to and rotate to because it's a massive massive help so the next tip that i would advise you guys is learn all your birth emergencies after you qualify and while you're on the preceptorship program so learn your birth emergencies wherever you are whether you're on the postnatal ward antenatal ward labor ward in the clinic in the birth center always always learn your birth emergencies because you never know when you will need to use them i've been on preceptorship program for 12 months and i've had loads and loads of emergencies while i was on the preceptorship program obviously most of them were on labor ward so i had things like pph i had things like moh i had things like uh, what else did i have shoulder dystocia um, i haven't had a breach delivery but i had so many emergencies on labor ward so i would suggest i would highly recommend that you learn your birth emergencies while you are rotating on the preceptorship program there's nothing worse than having or going through an emergency and not knowing what to do and actually freezing because freezing and not knowing what to do is what put people's lives at risk but if you know your stuff and you know what to do if an emergency arises or you know how you can help and assist in an emergency then that woman and that baby will be safe and have a very safe you know care or journey while they're in your care so i would highly recommend that you learn all your birth emergencies and that you remember and you note down all your birth emergencies what you will do in in terms of the birth emergencies who you need to escalate to who needs to come and arrive while this emergency happens what you need to do in terms of the birth emergencies what you need to document what you need to tell the woman what you need to tell the woman's family and things like that just make sure you know how to respond how to act how to react how what to do in an emergency while you're on the preceptorship program because this can happen and they do expect you to be able to handle yourself in an emergency because you're now qualified you've done all your oskis you've done all your vivas on how to handle birth emergencies so they are expecting you to know what to do when these things arise or who to escalate to or when to escalate when these things arrive but yes that is a very big 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 
um, tip and I think you guys need to know your emergencies and know what to do if an emergency does arise. Okay, so the next tip is basically goes with the last one that I just mentioned. Is basically every time you're on shift, especially on the wards like labor ward, birth center, um, postnatal ward, and antenatal ward, always note down or kind of familiarize yourself with when to escalate to a doctor and why you would need to escalate to a doctor or escalate to someone more senior. Say for example, the midwife in charge or the coordinator on labor ward. So what I mean by this is note when or who to escalate to in case you're ever on your own and you need to make that decision to escalate a certain situation about your lady or about your baby to a particular person or to a particular member of the team so say for example you have a lady and you're caring for her and the maternity assistant has done her observation and she comes to you and says this lady's this lady's blood pressure is in the red it's been in the red for the past two hours now i've done it um, every 15 minutes and it's constantly in the red you can't just take that information on and do nothing about that you have to act on that information so you need to know okay this lady's blood pressure has been in the red for over two hours now um, I need to do something about this because this can't continue so you need to know obviously one you need to know what to do in those kind of situation what you need to do obviously you need to go see her you need to then do certain things for example take bloods and make sure she's cannulated and things like that and you also need to then escalate so you need to escalate to the midwife in charge or a doctor to come and review your lady as soon as possible so you need to give an s bar handover over the phone so that the doctor knows that they need to come and review this lady as soon as possible so you need to give a detailed s bar handover over the phone and you then need to tell them that they need to come and see this lady as soon as possible and these are the reasons why they need to come see, see this lady as soon as possible so while you're on the preceptorship program take note of when and who to escalate to so things like that that was just one example so for a lady that has high blood pressure problems you need to escalate to your midwife in charge and you also need to escalate and call the doctor to come and review this lady as soon as possible um say for example you have a baby that's been grunting and the observations are also in the red you then need to know who to then escalate to you need to call a pediatrician to come and review that baby and you also need to inform your midwife in charge that you have a baby that is in the red that is grunting and you need a doctor to come or a pediatrician to come and review this baby as soon as possible so that tip is basically know when to escalate know who to escalate to and also know what to do when you're escalating say for example there's a woman um, complaining of chest pain you need to make sure once you've called the doctor you've got the ECG machine and you've, you've taken an ECG so that when the doctor then arrives then they can review the ECG and then see whether there's you know an issue there or they see they need to do any other investigations at least that one is done and out of the way you've already done it um, so you need to know what kind of steps you need to take once you started to escalate things and when you need to escalate things i hope that kind of makes sense know who to escalate to know what to do once you escalated um and just basically know the timings of when you need to escalate and who to escalate to and know the numbers of the person you need to escalate to so make sure you note those things down while you're on the preceptorship program observe the other midwives when they're escalating ask them who did you just escalate to and why so they can give you kind of their reasons so you know for next time if you're ever in that situation you then know when to escalate and who to escalate to so tip number 10 this tip is basically or mainly used in the community when you're on clinics when you're booking women so this tip is basically know who to make referrals to and why say for example you are booking a lady and she discloses that she had um in her pregnancy she had gdm on diet in her last pregnancy you would then need to know who you're going to refer her to are you going to refer her to the diabetic midwife are you going to refer her to go and do an ogtt um or are you going to refer her to have a standard care as everyone else someone doesn't have any other risk factors you need to know who you're going to do the referral to say for example you also have another lady and she discloses you know domestic violence or she's homeless currently doesn't have anywhere to live but she 
has arrived for her booking appointment you need to then know that you're going to refer that lady to the safeguarding team or the perinatal mental health team or that she needs to be safeguarded in other ways you need to know where to refer these ladies to if things are disclosed to you or if they mention things to you you need to know who to refer them to and also why you're referring to so you can also justify your reasons and also you are referring them to the right place so that they can have the care that they need and that they're not missed in the system so for example if a woman is homeless or suffering from domestic violence and she was never referred at the booking that woman will basically have a horrible pregnancy she'll probably go through a lot of things that could have been prevented if she were then referred to as soon as possible when she was seen at booking so that's one thing that i would highly recommend and a very big tip is note down your referrals like for example who you're going to refer to and also note down why you'll be referring to these women so that when you ever come into a certain situation it comes up and then you know where you're going to refer them to because you know the why when you know the why you know the who to then refer to and you know the care that this ladies need i hope that kind of makes sense just know who you're referring to and know the why you're referring to so that you're ever in that situation or you're ever booking a lady or seeing a lady in the community then you're able to basically notice it and act on it and make sure that she basically gets the care that she needs so tip number 11 tip number 11 is learn your medication once you are qualified and you become a newly qualified midwife on the preceptorship program so basically what i mean by this is learn your medication you're going to be using a lot of medication especially if you're on labor ward or if you're on the postnatal ward and antenatal ward you will be looking after women that are you know using a lot of medications or that are prescribed different types of medications and you need to know what the medication is for why you're giving the medication how often do you need this to give this medication from is this medication a video free exemption medication can i give this medication without having a doctor present so learn your medication once you are qualified because i know i had to do this once i was on the preceptorship program while well, once i was qualified because medication was basically such a long thing to kind of get into my brain it was something that i kind of had to relearn while i was um a newly qualified midwife on the preceptorship program so i did all my medication exams and tests in uni and then i kind of like left it there i left it at my exam and i left it in school and then once i finished and qualified i was like damn i need to basically relearn my medication i really need to learn what this medication is for i need to know if it's under the midwifery exempt so i had to basically relearn all my medication but that has helped me because when i'm on the postnatal ward and a woman comes to me and she says what is this medication for then i'm i'm able to then tell her what the medication is for and why she's having this medication and the reason she's being prescribed this medication so things like that there's women that are going to be asking you why am i taking this why am i taking this medication and you need to know why if you're given that medication you need to know what what it does you need to know the side effects you need to know how it's given you need to know the dose because these women have the right to know this information and if they ask you you need to be able to then tell them what the medication is for why they're having it you know how often they need to have it what's the right dose for it and also for you as well if a doctor prescribes something and they prescribe something in like that's not correct you can then correct them and make sure they're giving the right dose the appropriate dose and you yourself know that they are prescribing something that is correct and accurate because if you give someone the wrong medication or the wrong dose just because a doctor prescribed it you are also liable because it's you that's actually giving the medication yeah the doctor has prescribed it but they've prescribed it and left it and left and went to do about their business because you're the one actually administering the medication you need to make sure that they prescribe the correct medication and the correct dose and the correct route and they're giving this medication for the correct and the right reasons so that's why you need to actually learn your medication so that there's no kind of drug errors while you're working or to minimize drug errors while you're working so learn your medications while you're on the preceptorship program okay so the last and final tip for this video is make sure you you know manage your time wisely make sure your time management is top-notch 
while you are working as a newly qualified midwife and this especially goes to newly qualified midwives that are working on the postnatal and antenatal ward because those wards can get quite hectic and you can find yourself staying after eight o'clock and staying around 9 10 11 p.m just to finish your documentation so make sure you manage your time correctly say for example if you have your drug round at nine o'clock make sure you have your drug round at nine o'clock if you have your drug round 12 o'clock make sure you have your drug round at 12 o'clock if you have your drug round at six o'clock make sure you have your drug round at six o'clock if you come on shift make sure you arrive promptly on shift so that you can manage your time better you take over handover you do all your emergency checks and get that out of the way you then go see your women introduce yourself tell them that you're the midwife that you're looking after do you all your checks make sure if they want anything then you basically sort that out after you've seen each and every single baby and mum and you've done their checks you've given them their medication in the morning you've done everything you can in the morning you then go back and sit down and you start documenting straight away so this is how basically i work so in the morning i come on shift i take handover i do all my emergency equipment checks i then go see each and every lady that i'm looking after and make sure i do introduce myself and if i'm working with a student we both introduce ourselves and then i do all my checks i check baby i check mum i do my head to toe checks i make sure if they have any questions they ask me i see if they have any medications due i give them and after i've seen each and every single lady and i've made sure that i've basically catered to them i then sit down straight away and i at least i document for at least three people before i go have my tea break for example after i have my tea break i come back and i continue documenting so that if anything else arises i've at least documented for say three people four people and then around six o'clock when we're doing medications again i go do my medication i go and after i do my medication i discharge who i need to be discharged and then i complete my documentation so when it comes to eight o'clock all i'm doing is giving handover and i'm just basically telling the i'm basically telling the midwives that are coming on shifts what's been happening who's gone home who's still here who's had the medication who hasn't had the medication and things like that i basically give my handover and i make sure i leave on time because i started my documentation on time so basically see what works for you see how you can basically get yourself into a routine once you get yourself into a routine you can manage your time better you can finish on time you get your documentation done on time you get to see your women on time you get to give the medication on time and things are not delayed so basically this last and final tip is basically to manage your time wisely and effectively so that you can have a smooth sailing shift and you can finish and start on time so that is the last tip for this video i hope this video has been insightful for you guys if you guys have more tips to add to my list please do comment them below i'm sure there's other people that would love to hear them um and if you've used any of my tips or if you're struggling currently as a newly qualified midwife under perceptorship program please dm me tell me your thoughts tell me what's going wrong i may be able to help some things i can help you guys on some things i may not know but i can find answers to but i'm happy to listen and i'm happy to basically advise you guys and give you guys my insight or my input based on what i go through and what i see on a day-to-day -day basis so yeah give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video um be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already Ready, and i'll be seeing you guys in my next video so until then bye guys